Well, I am excited to kick this off and it was fun to put this deck together and just kind of thinking about, you know, how do we motivate our group leaders that sometimes you're so close to it. It's, it's almost difficult to step out of the weeds. A little bit more about me. I'm from the San Francisco Bay area. That's where Salesforce is based. So it's kind of right in my neck of the woods. And I started at Salesforce back in 2013 working on the developer relations side. And I really just kind of found my way into community. It was something that I just thought was so cool, so different. I, my marketing background kind of just was like, I kind of threw it out the window and just like full in on community. And I haven't looked back building our developer community. And there was a point where we kind of brought together, we had some siloed community programs and we brought it over into one and that's when we rebranded as the trailblazer community and at that point i was leading our team of community managers and i did that for several years and then around 2019 i became the director of trailblazer community and so i feel pretty lucky it's a it's an awesome job and this is a little bit more about our community and our leaders specifically so i kind of think of it in a few different buckets. We have our Trailblazers online. We support our online community, which we just relaunched, which was really exciting. Our new reimagined uh, community. So if you want to go check that out, we had combined with Trailhead, which is our learning platform and our community and brought that together into one experience. So it is pretty cool. We're excited about it. But on our online side, we have people that are leaders that are helping to answer questions and just giving their knowledge back. And we also have over a thousand collaboration groups on the online community. So we have, and those are really open for anyone to start public or private. So we have a lot of those online groups and then our community groups program or chapters program, or however you want to refer to it, user groups program. We have both virtual and local chapters, and I'll talk a little bit more about what that looks like. We also have some amazing community conferences that we support. So we work closely with the organizers of those conferences and the planning teams to make sure that they feel supported and have what they need. And then we have our Salesforce MVP program, which is really our product experts and leaders in the community. And this is our recognition program. So we host annual nominations and we award MVPs on an annual basis. And that's another you know, key program that we work very closely on and definitely core to our community. But today we're going to talk very specifically about our Trailblazer community groups. And these are all led by customers and completely voluntary. We have over 1,300 groups at this point, which is incredible to say, in 90 countries. And we have over 1,800 leaders and they are meeting 300 times uh, per month. So pretty much any day of the week, there is a community group event happening. So as you can imagine, our team is quite busy and just a lot of lessons learned along the years of growing to this point. So hoping to kind of share some of that knowledge back here and kind of what's worked and some of some more tactical things that maybe you can take away for your own programs. All right. So here's a little bit more about how we motivate our leaders. So when I was thinking about this topic, I kind of was starting with the why, like why, why are people motivated to become a leader in the first place? And, you know, I think this is a question, you know, we're, I'm, I'm a very curious person by nature. And I think that works well as a community group leader, or I'm sorry, a community manager, because like, you're constantly trying to get feedback from your community to understand them better and to understand what they need to be successful. So I just, thought it would be good to kind of take that step back and understand the why first before you just go right into the tactics of how to motivate. Because this is something that we definitely do. I mean, on our leader application, it's one of the questions we ask is, you know, why, why do you want to become a leader? And that really helps us to understand kind of the themes that, you know, not, not everyone has the same motivators, but it's good to understand, you know, as, as a whole, like what are the motivators from your community and, and trying to see what those common themes are. Of course, we also host a lot of leader surveys. We do an annual leader survey to our, our group leaders, but we do a lot of kind of ad hoc things, just getting feedback, whether it's programs or processes or things that we want to see how we improve. We're constantly getting that feedback loop with our leaders. And of course, we do a lot of one-on-one -on -one conversations still, not losing that personal touch. 
and we have a support handle too. So just having the visibility into the insights from the cases that we receive or FAQs, if you're not quite at that scale yet, just like what are the things people are asking for and just making sure you're keeping a close eye on kind of what, why people are starting to want to become a leader with your program in the first place. And so for our community, you know, it, it looks a lot like learning, connecting and, and getting shared success together. So the first thing is really setting the framework for success and creating a space for leaders to thrive. And I think this kind of all goes around like ownership, right? I think there's pride in ownership with, with most people. And, and, you know, I, it's something I talk a lot about at work is like, if we're talking about a task at hand, it's like, who's going to own it? You, you have to have an owner, right? And I think it's really important when you just from the get go, it's just setting some clarity around what their role is and making sure that they have everything that they need for success out, out, out of the gate. But I think that clarity was something that kind of I honed in on because I think letting them know, like if they're applying to lead a group, that they're in fact are the leader, right? And it's it's not going to be Salesforce. It's really on them. And, and that community or that local chapter really relies on their ability to keep it active and to make sure that they're meeting on a regular cadence. And they really rely on that. And you know, if, if a group does go inactive, it's, it's like one of the first thing we hear is from the members. Cause they're like, I want to connect. I want in like what's going on. So I think it's really important to set those expectations up front. And then, you know, as we built our program, we have so many resources, you know, it, it started very simply, but you know, as we continued that feedback loop, they're like, we want to have content for our meetings. And so we created a content library and we want to network with other leaders. So we created opportunities to do that. But then we realized, you know, we had so many resources that it was like a little overwhelming, especially for newbies that are coming into the program. So the next tip is really just onboarding, but don't overwhelm, especially if you have a lot of resources. We started out very simply of like, welcome to the program. Here's everything you need. And then it started to get that feedback back that they felt overwhelmed and almost defeated out of the gate, right? It's just too much too soon. So one of the things that we're currently working on is just creating more of an onboarding process and journey and not making it so like much of a, just a brain dump of here's everything that you're going to need to be a leader and good luck, right? So we're going to do a little bit more handholding and and do it in more bite-sized chunks. And this is something that we're looking at is creating like a 30 day onboarding journey that will have steps and kind of like a drip campaign in a way, bits and pieces. And so it doesn't become so over overwhelming and it's a little bit more thoughtful. So, so far uh, the feedback has been good. We're still working on rolling this out. So I'll definitely give you updates along the way on how this is going, but something really excited about and actually some of the leaders that we had just shared this with were like oh i want to go back and do my onboarding all over again so hopefully it's a step in the right direction and then never lose that personal touch as you can imagine growing to the scale of over 1800 leaders that's incredibly difficult to do at scale but it's so so important and i think it really helps people feel connected to our team to salesforce to feel supported to feel like they have that gateway where they can come and give feedback and just share what challenges they might be having. So some of the ways that plays out for us to check in with our leaders is we have regular office hours. We definitely do one-to-one -one coaching conversations. We leverage tools like Calendly so that we can kind of keep our calendars open and accessible. And I still share my calendar out, even though I'm a director. I mean, part of my job that I absolutely love is still just having a chance to talk to our trailblazers. So um, definitely just making sure we keep our, you know, that, that personal touch. We have virtual coffees. We offer mentorship. So sometimes like we can't always scale our team to the size of our community too. So often we rely on some of our more tenured group leaders to help do that work too. So there's mentorship opportunities and that really helps some of the people that are newer to get feedback. And in some ways that could be even more effective because they're hearing it from up here. And then we started doing an advisory board. I think that was back in 2019. We just relaunched a new advisory board. So we're going to keep it going because it's been pretty successful. And this is another way for us to 
really touch base with you know volunteers. They all raise their hand. They want to be a part of it. And this is another opportunity for them to get feedback and really shape the program from that feedback. So we look at it as a co-design. And this really helps them feel engaged and that their voice is heard and that they really feel like they, they have a say in where the program goes. And it really is the feedback from the community that helps to shape our roadmap. So that's just not lip service. It is something that we definitely practice. And uh, here's, here's another topic that you know is near to dear to my heart is kind of creating a reason to host an event. We started to kind of pilot some, some different ways to do this and kind of sharing kind of our, our more successful launches, which is creating these halo events and event in the boxes. So we really kind of centered around like, what are the reasons why our community may want to get together? And often it can be for us, it, it can be our biggest conferences. Like we host Dreamforce every year. We have Trailhead DX, which is our developer and admin conference. And so those are like fantastic opportunities. I mean, people are already engaged and they want to be a part of it or they're attending in person hopefully one day again. And these are really fantastic ways to get your community engaged. So we started to do this, I think it was back in 2018, it was with the first Trailhead DX. I remember we started to doing viewing parties and it was just an opportunity for them to get together, to kind of watch the keynote together, have a celebration. And it was great, but at the same time, they wanted more. They wanted some, they really wanted to get the content. They wanted to learn together. So we wanted to package that up. And that was kind of what is now Global Gatherings, which is where we put all the best content from our in-person conferences into a box, essentially a box, virtual box, and try to package that up in a way that's really friendly for a group meeting, whether it's presentations, having speaker notes, maybe having demos that are scripted out, and just making it super simple for them to take all that good learning from the conferences and take it to their communities. And really it extends those events in a way and it gives access to so many more of our customers that we ever would at a conference because there's a limit to how many tickets you can have. And with community, you know, it really um, helps us to extend all the work that we do and put into a conference and all that amazing content that you know our content producers put together, it's like, why not just turn that over to the community and let them kind of run with it? And so that's been fantastic and super successful. Of course, you know, right now it's a little bit difficult with everything being virtual. So we we did pivot this year and we we were also getting a lot of feedback from our community group leaders that part of the challenge and why they weren't necessarily hosting a meeting was because they were strapped for time because because of COVID and everything else going on in their lives that they were just, you know, that this was something that was slipping. And so we did some watch parties this year and we piloted it with our world tour events and we did it again with our, our marketing connections event. And then we did the big one with Trailhead DX, which was just, I guess, two weeks ago. I can't remember anymore. And it was fantastic. It was just a little bit more simplified. It was just like, Hey, just host a watch party, get together, have some fun. We sent out some some kits with like little watch party kits and some shirts just to kind of extend that celebration out to our community. And it was really fun. And I'll, I'll share the results of that on the next slide. We've also done with Dev Week, Pro Bono Week, working closely with our .org side of the house. And then when we did rollouts like Lightning, we did something with the Lightning Tour, which Regina probably remembers because that was when she was at Salesforce, where it's just like, looking for those opportunities that your community is already kind of excited about and then creating something that gives them an opportunity to meet. So hopefully that makes sense. So here's a little bit more on Trailhead DX watch parties, which was just, like I said, it was just very recent. And we actually had over 200 groups participate in 36 countries. And we had over 6,500 attendees um, at those events. So it was really, really popular. Here's some of the tweets and people kind of sharing their swag kits they were super excited about. They were taking screenshots and sharing on social. It was just a lot of fun. And for some of the, and we saw a huge spike, by the way, in, in meetings from this event. And so it was really fantastic and just nice to see that there was still that response and people were motivated to continue to meet. But sometimes you just got to give them a reason to do so. And then another really important one is peer-to-peer -peer inspiration. So we just find that a lot of our leaders really want to network with other leaders. And so we really try to do this whenever we can. This picture is from Dreamforce 2019, where we host an annual kind of group leader meetup. And 
this was like one of the biggest ones that we had. And I mean, it was just incredible to see that many people in a room. I miss having people in a room together. It was great. But this is where we kind of celebrate them and we'll give updates on the program. We'll talk about, you know, the program as a whole and how they fit into it. And then also making sure that we're sharing successes. You'll see on the right picture there, that was a panel that we hosted with some of our group leaders, just giving them an opportunity to talk about how they lead their groups. And we did some really fantastic networking circles at that event too, where we, we split them out by either the type of group that they ran or maybe what region they were in, whether they were like a 10 year plus veteran or they had just started a group and just giving them a chance to meet with kind of their people. And of course, we also love to just celebrate our leaders. I mean, I can't state it enough. What they do is so amazing. The fact that they volunteer to help you know, start these local chapters and help other people learn and connect and really succeed at Salesforce is just mind blowing. So we always try to bring the fun and the inspiration back into our community and really celebrate our leaders. So as an example here, this is when we celebrated over a thousand community groups. We put on like a big virtual party and we just had a lot of fun just celebrating them. So just encouraging you to bring the fun and celebrate milestones, award great leader characteristics, share success stories. That's something that like we do often where we highlight and spotlight our trailblazers keep those personal touches and also keep that attitude of gratitude because you know what they do is so amazing and just continuing to thank them, it goes a long way. 